Good evening. I'm Will, and I want you to start by imagining the following. Tomorrow, you lose everything. You were happy living a great life with everything that you wanted. You wake up the next morning and everything is gone. Your whole life has been completely transformed. This is what happened to me after a car accident in April 2016, and this talk is about the hell that I've been through and how I've kept going. I was involved in a major car accident whilst driving up the A303 from my house in Somerset up to London to go on holiday with my friends. I was also about to go on a civil rights trip to Alabama as I was teaching history at, here at Haleybury. I absolutely loved teaching and living here. It's a fantastic place. I even put on a TEDx conference with Mr Head back in 2015. Therefore, it is a complete honour to be here giving this talk to you this evening. Nobody knows exactly what happened, but I came off the road into a ditch at around 70 miles per hour and received a severe traumatic brain injury, which is as awful as it sounds. I was airlifted by Wiltshire Air Ambulance to Southampton General Neuro ICU, one of the leading neuro ICUs in the world. They apparently gave me scans, did tests and kept me alive for three months. I was in a coma for the whole time I was there. I had approximately eight bleeds all over my brain, which is like having eight simultaneous brain hemorrhages. Injuries just don't get as serious as mine. The doctors didn't know if I'd live for about 11 days, and if I did live, whether I'd be a vegetable for the rest of my life or not. My brain damage was so severe, and the pressure inside my head caused me to forget how to do everything, including both breathing and swallowing. Southampton General's care was outstanding. I was given pioneering physiotherapy in my coma by the excellent Dr Lightfoot. I put a lot of my subsequent recovery down to this fantastic treatment, so thank you Dr Lightfoot. I should also mention the support I received from the then chaplain at Haleybury, Reverend Briggs. Apparently he spent a number of days sat by my bedside praying. Whether or not you believe that made a difference doesn't matter. I just want to thank him very deeply for doing so. After Southampton, I spent two months in intensive care at Musgrave Hospital in Taunton. Then I was deemed well enough to start my rehabilitation at the Brain Injury Rehabilitation Unit, or BIRU, in Bristol. BIRU offered me excellent, truly multidisciplinary re rehabilitation. My symptoms have changed and evolved since the accident, but by the time I reached BIRU, they included hypertension down my left side that caused an inability to walk or move my left arm. Therefore, I had no ability to wash or dress and lacked any kind of mental capacity, which means I had no idea who, what, where I was from April to July. I also remember I had real difficulty talking. Therefore, I had psychology, speech and language therapy, physiotherapy and occupational therapy. At that period, they followed the concept of neuroplasticity, which I understand means that our brains are capable of relearning how to do things that have, they have forgotten, which was pretty much everything for me. Their multidisciplinary approach really has set me on the road to recovery, and I will be eternally grateful for it. I recovered my mental capacity on Revelation Monday, as I've always known it. I had what's known as post-traumatic amnesia, where well, I might be awake and talking, but I had no idea who I was or why I was there. I was living some parallel realities based on my memories of the previous years. I was fighting the Mobile One trenches. I was at the house I grew up in, and I was playing tennis against Andy Murray at Legends. He beat me, though. I would argue with my friends and family endlessly that this is what I was doing. This passed on Revelation Monday, as I've always known it. The day I woke up and realised who I was and why I was in hospital. Also, I learned that Brexit had happened, so the world had changed a lot. My road to recovery has been st started on the, in earnest on this day, and I had the ability to make new memories from this point onwards. Since I've had mental capacity, I have been completely determined to make as good a recovery as possible. First of all, I can remember being completely determined to walk again. I remember pushing myself day after day, first standing up with a frame, then walking down the corridor with the frame. Eventually, I remember walking outside with a stick for the first time. This was an incredibly proud moment. Then I continued to do physio, th physio exercises. Then when I was dis discharged, being double the number of ex doing double the number of exercises recommended by my physio every day for the first two years in an attempt to rectify my limp. I still do some exercises today. I remain completely determined to walk 
without a limp one day. Particularly since COVID, it has been increasingly common for people to value the NHS. The excellence of my care throughout the seven months in hospital has made me incredibly, incredibly grateful for our wonderful NHS. For the first four years on release from my hospital, I lived with my mum and her husband Clive in Ilminster in Somerset, a place I had only visited before but I now lived in. Mum was incredible during my time in hospital. She literally moved to Southampton General Hospital. When I was released, my family were excellent and all very understanding of somebody living with somebody who had received such an awful injury. They made adjustments to the house and Clive even accompanied me up the stairs whenever I needed to go up. I continued to receive very good multidisciplinary care from the Somerset CCG's early release team. I was completely determined to make to live as normal a life as possible, but I, even going shopping was for the first time was an enormous achievement. That in fact this came up as a Facebook memory the other day, five years ago. It said I can now go into town whenever unaided, whenever I want. What an achievement! This is what seems to be completely insignificant to everyone else, but was enormous to me. This is an example of where I really appreciated everyday things that I had previously taken for granted. There are plenty more examples, such as going for lunch with my nan, going to the pub, or even watching Eurovision for the first time. I now take absolutely nothing for granted, because I know just how lucky I am to be able to do anything. This is all partly down to the the trust that my sister set up and did a huge amount of fundraising for. This trust fund has allowed me to continue to pay for therapy when the NHS treatment eventually ran out, and I still use this money today. So I'm incredibly thankful to Hull and everybody else who donated. I should also thank Hull for putting putting me in touch with an excellent care team and the, the, the money she raised helped to pay for, and for generally just being such a fantastic sister. The other thing that this story brings up is how brilliant Facebook memories have been for me all the way through my recovery. Lots of of these are something to do with my, the quizzes that me and my dad started doing in Ilminster, which were a great way of me meeting people and involving myself in the new community. I basically get the, the story of my recovery told to me through this feature. I often look at it and feel a real sense of pride, especially because my memory of the first two years or so is very hazy. I may have recovered my mental capacity, but now my memory of the period is very poor indeed. My occupational therapist, or OT, said to me that my determination is the main reason I've made such a great recovery. One of my biggest targets has always been to live on my own again, which I finally achieved last year. After four years of living with Mum and Clive, I moved to my dad's house, which was lovely. Dad has been incredible ever since the accident and has always tried to treat me as normally as possible. By February 2021, I was ready to move out from either of my parents' houses for the first time. And so I moved to a town near where I was working and my girlfriend happened to live. I now live in that town and I completely independently, which is an enormous achievement, because my injury almost completely took away my ability to do so. I am only too aware of just how lucky I am to have such a wonderful, supportive family. I have learned the, an incredibly hard way just how, how much my family love me. They have all been fantastic in their own way. I could tell you a huge number of stories, but will spare you them this evening. My friends have also been fantastic. Now I understand just how valuable they all are, and I will never ever take any of them for granted. Just think of your friends, some of whom might be sat around you now. They might be the people who are sat by your bedside if anything terrible happened to you, just like my friend Rowan was to me throughout my recovery. I have been completely determined to return to work ever since my time at Biru, where I had a visit from Bill Irving, my then housemaster at Haleybury, as I was working. I will never forget this visit, partly because he brought Rosie along. I remember him telling me that all the kids missed me and were asking about me, which made me always want to return to do everything I possibly could do to work with kids again. Therefore, around a year after my accident, I started volunteering as a TA and a teacher part-time at the local school in Ilminster. Mark, the head teacher, was absolutely phenomenal with me, and, year, and about a year after arranged me to have an interview for a paid TA role in another local town, a job I secured as a humanities TA. Doing paid work in a school was absolutely incredible, just three and a half years after my terrible injury. 
Whilst there, I grew in confidence and found my fatigue reducing. Therefore, amongst lots of other things, I applied for my first teaching job since the accident as a maths teacher at a school in another local town. I managed to get this job part-time, which was very mu- I very much enjoyed initially. However, being a teacher again was tough, particularly as a maths teacher, so it hadn't been for about five year- four or five years. Therefore, this maternity cover job didn't go as well as I hoped it would. From here, I started working at a school that my dad has worked at for nearly 40 years. I very much enjoyed working there in two different roles, temporary roles, including one as a personal learning teacher and one as a maths tutor. Unfortunately, my contract expired there in June 2021, so I had to apply for many other jobs. One of these was a job was a specialist at a specialist autism school in Poole. Here, I became a permanent maths and humanities teacher. I absolutely love teaching here. The class sizes are very small and both the leadership and the TA support are excellent, which benefits my fatigue, which is a, still a slight concern of mine. Fatigue has been my main barrier all the way through my recovery. In the first year or so after the accident, I used to take two or three naps a day and I felt very groggy whilst not in bed. This has steadily reduced and now I take one nap a day after work. This allows me to be both teaching both maths and humanities at my school well and is tremendously enjoyable. Finally, being a permanent member of staff at a school is an unbelievable feeling. In summary, my progress has been extraordinary in every regard. I put this down to both determination and fantastic support. My message to you this evening is simple. If you want something badly enough, you can, you will achieve it. This is a cliche, but not from a man who has successfully rebuilt his life from nothing. Just the fact that I'm living independently would be enough for, of an achievement for some people, or just the fact that I'm holding down a good job. But I'm doing both of these things, as well as sustaining a very happy relationship with my girlfriend Jess. It's onwards and upwards for me, and I'm happier now than I was in March 2016.